Hello and welcome to yet another edition of exclusive interview right here on Rainbow Television. I'm your host and my name is Mike Marale. Today in this program I have a special guest. This guest has traveled miles with a message to us Malawians. We are going to look at health issues. Now first of all let me introduce my guest. Welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, tell us who you are and where you're coming from. I am Austin Oduro Tieno. I'm from the Republic of Kenya and I'm privileged to be welcomed here at the warm heart of Africa, that is Malawi. You are most welcome to the warm heart of Africa. On behalf of all of us here, let me welcome you Thank warmly. You. Um, you are coming from Kenya. Yes. First of all, I would like to know what has brought you to Malawi. Actually, I'm a clinical officer by profession. And uh, Kenya and Malawi are privileged to have uh, clinical officers uh, who are the frontline health workers. So I'm um, here, courtesy of an invite by the office of the first deputy speaker, as the president of the Global Association of Clinical Officers. That is the association that brings all the clinical officers in the world. So I was invited here, and also with the leadership of the Clinical Officers Union, that is the Physician Assistant Union of Malawi. Yes. It looks like there is a mission that you're undertaking. Uh, what challenges have prompted the people to invite you? Can you give us a brief background prior to your being invited to Malawi? There must have been a challenge somewhere. Yeah, prior to me being invited to Malawi, uh, you realize that uh, clinical officers are uh, spread across sub-Saharan Africa. They use the title uh, clinical officers and in West Africa they use physician assistants. And some countries like South Africa, they use clinical associates and Botswana doctor assistants. So we held our last conference uh, last year before, just a month before the pandemic uh, struck Africa. And it was a very huge conference that was attended by very, very many clinical officers from different countries, Malawi being one of them. And we learned that Malawi was leading when it comes to the, the, the way the clinical officers are equipped and the way they have been trained. They are the people who do these complex surgeries that even clinical officers in other countries don't do. They do the hysterectomies, they do the cesarean sections. But uh, we realized that uh, doing this and being equipped and all these surgeries that Malawi are doing, they are doing them under, they are camouflaged, they are under some particular people. So we realized that Kenya, setting the example, Malaysia and uh, Nigeria, having their own board, we realized that Malawi, it will be better if they also have a regulatory body or a council that will regulate their training and give them licenses. Just for example, you find a clinical officer, I can cite an example like Aubrey Philemon, who has done a lot of things, a lot of surgeries, more than a thousand surgeries. He is doing this surgery under the licenship of a medical doctor. Yeah. So no one will uh, accredit that this such and such a person did this surgery. Yes. So the license is courtesy of a doctor who is being credited for that work but and if he does a mistake or with issues of medical legal then it will be on his neck that who allowed you to do this which license so we realize that the only way we can approach this is to approach the government to approach the legislative arm so that we come up with an amicable solution and we move forward so in other words you're trying to say malawi does not have a regulatory body we have no regulatory authority to accredit those people that are supposed to take surgery? Yes, the, 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 the people, the regulatory body is under the Medical and Dental Council. That is uh, regulating doctors and other health workers. So the clinical officers, according to the Medical and Dental Council, they are termed as paramedic, yes. which is a very ambiguous word. Someone who performs a serious section on you, on a patient, is not a paramedic, that is a professional. So we wanted the Medical and Dental Council to start licensing this particular cadre. That has not happened. So the main reason I've come here, I've come to woo Parliament, parliamentarians, so that the amendment that is coming to Parliament, the Medical Dental Council amendment that is being brought to Parliament, I hear now it's called the Health Professions Council, should, should factor in the role played by the clinical officers, and not only in Malawi, but in the entire Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. You were talking to, is it the first Deputy Speaker of Parliament? Yes. And that's the one who invited you to Malawi? Yes. You have had discussions with that first Deputy Speaker of Parliament? Yes. What have you discussed? What did you center on in your discussions? 
Uh, it was a very, very fruitful meeting. I was so happy. I was delighted to have met the first Deputy Speaker, Honorable Madaliso Kazombo. Uh, we discussed about the same, same issues I'm talking about here, the re regulatory body. I went with a team of the Physician Assistant Union of Malawi. And one of the things he acknowledged, the, he acknowledged that uh, the clinical officers in Malawi, he knows them. They are the people who have been seeing patients, even in his rural Kasungu East constituency. He acknowledged the presence of clinical officers who are doing a marvelous work. So he says that I even uh, gave him a, a copy of the Clinical Officers Registration Act of Kenya, Act 20, and he had, a, had to look at it. The Malawians also have got the, the Health Professions Act that is set to be introduced in Parliament, and he said he will look at it with his team. There is the Committee of Health, and uh, from there it was a positive meeting. After that meeting, I also met two clinical officers who are members of Parliament in Malawi. Is one is called Honorable Enoch, he's the MP for Salim uh, Northwest, and uh, Honorable uh, Kwafaya, who is also the MP for Desa North. So these two MPs are clinical officers, they have the background in clinical medicine. In fact, Honorable Kwafaya attended his advanced diploma in Moshi, Tanzania. So they really know what is happening, and uh, we also met them and discussed a lot. And from this meeting, we've learned, we've learned a lot, and the clinical officers in Malawi, who are the frontline health workers, have something to celebrate about it. Now, briefly, can you tell us what this, um, the regulatory body that is in Kenya, what is its mandate, briefly, so that as Malawi is trying to buy a leaf from Kenya, people should know how different things will be with a regulatory authority in place. Yeah, first of all, in Kenya there are 23,000 clinical officers, and these clinical officers are uh, regulated by the Clinical Officers Council of Kenya, which is uh, an act of parliament. It came, uh, it came as an act of parliament, Act 20. It had been amended several times. This body has got the powers to register, regulate, train, inspect institutions that are training clinical officers as per the standards, and they are the only body mandated to license these clinical officers and the pathway. When you talk about the pathway, like someone has done a diploma in clinical medicine here in Malawi, uh, he wants to progress. There was some block in Malawi where you re do a diploma, the only thing you can do is an advanced diploma. But in Kenya, through the Act, we've now opened the pathway where they can now move to Bachelor of Science in clinical medicine, to Masters in clinical medicine in other specialties. So by doing that, other countries in neighboring Kenya like Uganda, Tanzania are following. Malawi should not be left behind because they are the, 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 the champion of, 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 of clinical medicine in Africa. What you are saying Malawi, they are the champions of clinical medicine in this part of Africa. What is it precisely that you can appreciate from Malawians? What you have learned? Because this is not the first time for you to be here. Yes. What is it that you can appreciate about our clinicians in Malawi? Uh, the clinicians in Malawi are hardworking, that is one. Two, they mean what they do. I think the training, the kind of training, that's why you realize that most Kenyans, I realize that there are a lot of Kenyans training here in Malawi. The Mulamulo College of Health Sciences, there is one in, 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 in Blantyre. So they, they appreciate the, 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 the type of training, the package that the clinical officers get. A diploma clinical officer in Malawi is someone who is uh, the course that they're doing is that that course that takes three years and one year internship that is a full degree course but here it's a diploma course so once that person does a degree course like now they have introduced the bachelor of surgery in different specialties that is a clinical officer's per standard and uh, the operations that they do because these clinical officers do operations they are specialized in the eye they are ones that are specialized in uh, reproductive health the gynecology, some are ENT, some are ophthalmology, so they are the backbone of primary health care in the Republic of Malawi. All right, let's take a short break before we continue with our exclusive interview right here on Rainbow Television. Welcome back. In this program, I'm talking to Austin Otieno, 
who is the president of the Global Association of Clinical Officers. Thank you. Um, Austin Otieno, yes. we've been talking about how Malawi is, comparative analysis with Kenya on uh, um, giving licenses to medical practitioners. I want to find out, how did they identify you for them to invite you? Yeah, how they identified me, there is, this is not my first time coming to Malawi. Uh, the, real, the first first time I came to Malawi was due to uh, football, because I'm also a football fan, so I came when one of my team was playing Big Bullets. The second time I came specifically to meet, I wanted to know, because once the news came out, broke out in Africa that Malawian clinical officers are doing surgeries, that other parts of Africa, those the, the, the clinical officers are not allowed to do, we decided to do what is called a fact-finding mission. So I was tasked by, the, by me being the head of the clinical officers in, 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 in internationally. So and being in Kenya, and Malawi is not far. So I was tasked to come to Malawi. I did it myself and I said, let me go and see. So I met those special clinical officers at Kamuzu Central Hospital. I also went to Queen Elizabeth Central Hospital. So those two hospitals, I met those special specialists, clinical officers. They took me around. They took me through the, 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 the training and whatever they do. So once I went back with the feedback, that interest and a lot of interest, uh, coupled with the, the connections I had, I had to make a comeback. And it is not the last time I'm coming because now the speaker, office of the speaker and the relevant Ministry of Health are planning to invite me to come and now come with my team to Malawi. All right, so you're coming this time starts from the time when they identified you. Now, um, when you undertook that course, were you given some kind of certificate? Uh, well, yeah, like personally in Kenya, me am a clinical officer. Yes. So in Kenya, you do three years of training. After that, you graduate with a diploma in clinical medicine and surgery. Then from there, you do a one-year internship. That one-year internship is when now they will give you the license to practice. Here in Malawi, it's the same. Three years of diploma, one year internship. But unfortunately, after the one year internship, there is no license. You are allowed to practice. You are just allowed to go to the field and practice. No one regulates your training. The person who is mandated to regulate your training is the medical and dental council. But unfortunately, they don't give them that card, that registration card. You know, when you are working in any country, you must have a license. Even you as a, as a, as a top media guy, you must have your license by the media council of Malawi that now I'm practicing. But unfortunately, here in Malawi, <laughs> the clinical officers are just left alone. They're yes. told to practice, which is dangerous. Just like the journalists. Yes, <laughs> it is dangerous. It's dangerous. Yes. Uh, would you tell us practical examples where this thing would come into play, where people would say, you see, this one is not licensed and this has happened. Yes. Can you give us a practical Very, experience? very practical because uh, I am a Malawian. I want to go and work in Kenya. I've got a job in Kenya with, let's say, UNICEF, United Nations job. Yes. Uh, very well paying and I have passed the interview now when I go to Kenya I, I, t I tell the clinical officers council of Kenya that I am a clinical officer from Malawi they will tell me bring your papers I will only produce the diploma certificate and maybe certificate to, to show that I have completed the internship then when I will be asked to produce my license certificate the medical council of Malawi of, of, the dental council of Malawi has never issued me with a license to practice in Malawi. So how can I practice in Kenya if I don't have that license to practice, practice in Malawi? So that is, those are the nitty gritty things. And that is why I came here, so that we are coming up with what is called a joint regulatory body, where someone can practice like the doctors. The doctors, if a doctor leaves Malawi and goes to Kenya, within a twinkle of an eye, they will look at the papers and they look at the board online. Registration by the Medical Dental Council. Yes, you are one of us. Can I issue the temporary license to practice? Within 24 hours, that person is allowed to practice. Those are the things that we really want. And that is why we came up with the International Association for Clinical Officers and Physician Associates that now will push for recognition, same curriculum, and also to have the same license where someone can practice. Yeah. Um, Mr. Austin Otieno, yes. this time around, we are going through a very difficult era, a very difficult time globally where we've got this COVID-19 pandemic, which has even affected the global economy. Now, you being somebody who is coming from a background of health, as a health authority, 
can you give us what is the situation like in Kenya and in your capacity what are you doing about this pandemic in Kenya yeah about this pandemic in Kenya I happens to also double up as the deputy secretary for the Kenya Union of Clinical Officers where we fight for workers rights and uh, we the welfare and the well-being of workers so in Kenya the issue of COVID-19 pandemic has really struck us just like other countries and neighboring countries we've had uh, we've lost lives and uh, uh, cases are increasing so we, you, you realize that the frontline health workers when combating this virus are the clinical officers other health workers are also there but the clinical officers that is the first person who will see that patient you not see this you not know whether this patient has got covid or not the patient will come with symptoms of covid we'll get into the outpatient of any facility in Kenya. The first person the patient will see, apart from where there's the registration desk, is the clinical officer. So this clinical officer needs to be equipped. The PPEs, need have, have the full PPE, mask, what, all those things. If this, patient, if this clinical officer who is, who is risking his life does not have these things, then it becomes a challenge. So in Kenya, the clinical officers, they are the frontline health workers. So we've really pushed. Uh, we are pushing with the government so that we have an enhanced, an enhanced risk allowance. The risk allowance we get is not, does not tally with the, what we do. So it's cutting across everywhere, even in Malawi. And the clinical officers, at, at least the government is trying to do, uh, is trying to appreciate us. But uh, since we went uh, for that long strike, we uh, went for almost 100 days strike, yes. just pushing to have the government to give us the enhanced risk allowance the talks are still ongoing and uh, maybe maybe in future or very soon we will get those things that we need and it cuts across in all the countries you go to uganda is the clinical officers you go to tanzania here it is the clinical officers malawi where we are here the clinical officers and south africa so the covid 19 pandemic we are the frontline health workers we need to be equipped we need that, uh, that the, the, the training on how to to to, to, to identify these people and, and there are a lot of things when it comes to COVID-19. And I know the Ministry of Health, both in Malawi and uh, in Kenya and those other countries, are collaborating on this. So far uh, in Kenya, we are 20,000 clinical officers. But uh, those who are employed by the government are around uh, 5, 000, around 7,000. Some are in private. And uh, we are pushing so that the government can employ more clinical officers. I was in parliament today, yesterday in Malawi and uh, I realized that when I was discussing this with MPs, there is need to employ. Apart from the teachers that they were talking about, they are also saying health workers need to be employed. So employment of, uh, we can call them the custodian of primary health care. The clinical officers and the nurses, their employment is very, very key in eliminating or combating this pandemic. You employ them in numbers to tackle this pandemic because this thing is here with us. It is not ending soon and the better we do this the earlier so 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 the, the, in kenya there is a, they, 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 they have employed almost 5000 health workers in the last uh, seven months they have employed 5000 health workers and i think the budget that the budget was read they're also planning to employ other health workers but now the remuneration that is now what we are fighting for so that at least this clinical officer who is working see even if you are at risk but then medicine is a calling then you know that you are well remunerated and finally uh let's talk about this covid 19 vaccine uh in many countries people have been very skeptical on this vaccine more especially on its efficacy and other there is some other stories coming in that it's not real and there is a bad motive behind it how have the kenyans have accepted the covid 19 vaccine and uh, what what are the achievements in or how far has government gone into vaccinating uh, people yeah the the kenyan at first it was we were skeptical the majority of the people not like us health workers we knew what a vaccine does if you are it's a it's a virus and there's a vaccine we'll all go in fact it started with the health workers the frontline health workers but uh, right now i can say that more than a million kenyans have already been vaccinated and uh, they are going people are going and uh, uh, the first people who had, you know, Kenya and some of them, or Africa at, at, at large, you wait for other people to go. You want someone to go and take that vaccine 
that's when you also <laughs> say that now let me see let me watch this person yes after one month <laughs> if he'll still be alive or he'll be okay then i will go yes. but the kenya they brought the first round yes. of the vac vaccination now we are in the second round yes. and people are being vaccinated and i can cite a good example you see now the euro 2020 taking place in uh, in different uh, countries and in different cities in europe you will find uh, a country like finland where the whole stadium is full uh, what is what does that mean everybody in that country has already been vaccinated so there is nothing like social distance they said they've been vaccinated twice so the vaccines are coming but you know most of us here in africa we politicize these things and then and then there is a, a lot of also the tendency of corruption eh? the, the, the government involvement uh, politicians are also involved but, but but what i know is that once the vaccine they are rolling it out it's unfortunate that different companies are producing these vaccines which is also good some are they say some are better than the other but the vaccine is a vaccine they look at the figures if it is 97 98 percent we use it kenya we use astrazeneca and i'm very sure here in malawi, yeah, malawi also using AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca, yes. yeah so so what happens is that uh we'll take time to slowly accept it the majority of the people but with the time the vaccination will be accepted uh, universally and uh, also globally and to mention like now in Kenya, Malawi, or those other countries, the vaccines, we love the vaccine. All right, now finally take this opportunity to give some advice to Malawians, those that are watching us now, on this AstraZeneca vaccine. You being a clinical person. So my comrades or Malawians, I want to tell you that uh, this is Austin Odwar speaking uh, from, Blanta, from Lilongwe, Malawi. I'm from Kenya. I want to say that the vaccines that are being issued by the government, that most specifically the Ministry of Health, is very safe. I personally have taken the vaccine twice in Kenya, AstraZeneca, and more than a million Kenyans have taken the vaccine. And I can say that with the vaccine, we will help, we will help combat this monster called COVID-19. Viewers, wherever you are, this is where now we end our program exclusive interview right here on Rainbow Television. I had my guest, and his name is Austin Otieno from Kenya, who has given us a lot about health issues. Now, we appreciate the fact that you were there watching Rainbow Television. On behalf of everyone, I wish you all the best when it comes to being health. Until next time, this is Mike Malali. Keep watching Rainbow Television.